Hey now, everybody. There's our Mr. Elvis. And yours truly ish. So, believe it or not, it is so cold here, my phone keeps saying the battery won't charge because temperatures extremes have been reached. And what I normally do is I usually use this phone because it's connected to the internet and that allows us to work and put our stuff up on the cloud so to speak and what i hope i have just done is opened up the wi-fi hotspot and i'm not seeing it Maybe because the Wi-Fi's off also. So yeah, it's fucking cold as hell. Well, I don't know about that. Cold as hell. Um, I'm guessing it's maybe 20 if we're lucky. Uh, it's a definite challenge. And I admit, if I knew better to do probably would but when we woke up this morning Elvis's tumor had uh, started leaking I went to pet him and it was all bloody and it's really really full I think it needs to be drained maybe it needs to be removed but we don't have any place for he to recover while we are um, Living in sub-freezing weather, it seems kind of stupid to, even if it's a, someone's present, a guy says he found somebody who will pay the vet bill, he needs to know who the vet is and this, that, and the other. Um, he's trying to help and it's appreciated, but it's a pain in the ass and it's even harder when you're hanging out realizing that oh, crap. what's up Mr. Mockweight Okay, so I hadn't turned the Wi-Fi hotspot on. Now it's on. Uh, there's something so... Oh, uh, there we go. And now do we see ourselves come fucking on? So yeah, it's a fucking challenge up in this motherfucker. Uh, heck, life is challenging without all of these difficulties. I realize that it gives us... Well, I don't know. We'll see. Who the heck is exceed... Uh, 
I'm not sure why this isn't working. It was fucking working yesterday. I guess maybe I need to restart. Take it from scratch. Uh, so, yeah. Um, it's tough. We're dealing with it. Money running quick. I mean, I've probably gone through two and a half. Maybe a third of my income already so far. Um, my check, whatever. And... Sure, there's lots of ideas, thoughts. Um, drive someplace where it's warm. Uh, I mean... I've been doing this for, I guess, nearly 20 years with it being 2018, 19 and a half years. I guess uh, April 1st will be officially 20 years. And, um, fuck. Without money, you don't really exist unless you, I mean, the bottom of the barrel, I suppose, or close to the bottom of the barrel, bottom of the barrel, bottle of the barrel. Uh, a lot of the people that frequented Martin de Porus when we were there, when I was there, um, and I'm thinking of Timmy and his Santa's hat and his night train and how he just drinks and drinks and drinks and drinks and drinks and drinks and drinks and, drinks and, drinks and that's all he does. And uh, most of those folks in the same way as I'm doing with Elvis now is trying to just make their days as comfortable as possible. And uh, being in a barn with no heat no shelter, basically. Where it is, we need food, shelter, clothing, and companionship. And I don't have shelter, really. And I feel like I'm losing my companion. Uh, I realize that... Uh, I don't consider him a burden nine times out of ten. Occasionally, it's not that he's a burden, but it's the way that people are that's a burden. For example, uh, looking for a place to live, no pets. I got service badges, but still, the fact that they're the type of people that says no pets tells me that I wouldn't want to probably fucking know them anyway. Um, there's also the uh, work down in the flats possibility to do that I'll probably have to um, if Chris shows up out here get a ride with him and take Elvis and the rake and warm clothes and I don't know what else but if I find that work badge it'll make the idea of going to work a whole lot easier um I went ahead and melted some more coconut oil and gave Elvis six capsules, which is six milliliters. That's a teaspoon, I guess, a little over a teaspoon. And since when I gave him the tablespoon and then some, he was really, really faded. But he kind of needs to be really, really faded if he's going to relax enough as to not damage that tumor and swelling and stuff um it feels really really pretty hard and um part of me seem feels like you know a simple little slit open snip 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 
hopefully got everything close it back up I think he could survive that and now that it's actually leaking onto the outside it seems kind of like we almost have to and then there's also the consideration of um, the recovery and how that's going to manifest and like a dumbass I still haven't fixed the heater blower motor on the Jeep and I think it would be an easy uh, Jimmy rig or Jerry rig or whatever but I don't want to fuck up stuff that I don't need to if I don't have to all that would really give us is a gas expense um, and that we'd like any other place if we weren't here spending our days sitting in the Jeep with the heat running to keep warm enough, uh, and then finding enough to keep motivated. Um, I'd love to be able to work on my apps or writing. Uh, normally I would wake up and have a cigarette, make some coffee, and start writing. Uh, that's not an option really this morning because it's bullshit-ass cold. And typing in 20-degree weather, you can't type with gloves. It's a fucking ridiculous notion. Um, so, uh, dealing with that. And the worst part about all of it is there's only... I don't know. For the next 10 days, I didn't see a, a temperature over freezing uh maybe one that was 33 or 35 but uh that's still sub freezing weather and we're going on the second week in a row i think um a lot of people that have moved here that i've talked to that have stayed long enough to force themselves to stay here basically um a lot of those people had mentioned to me how they had done all of the things that anybody that's considered a local has done. And in that aspect of a community, I guess it's the how people pay their dues, I guess. But... Um, I have to acknowledge and realize that uh, traveling is a challenge, at least by driving. I've had the thought of taking Elvis onto the train and going to California, maybe. Um, I've also thought of what a month train pass would cost and basically just live on the train. Um, being outdoors, obviously, in a homeless environment is detrimental to our situation, especially considering Elvis's condition. Um, I hate being a burden, but I also know that, I mean, some random somebody somewhere is willing to pay up to a thousand dollars so Elvis can have a surgery, but how often does somebody like pitch in like that for a place to stay, you know, a month in a bed and breakfast maybe shit they could write that shit off as a tax write off and we'd be warm close to town have access to public transportation if I'm going to do any work whether it's the comedy works or stagehand or whatever 
Um, if I'm up here and not driving up here being Gilpin, Tucky, uh, I ain't going to get any work. Chris already told me the other day that yesterday he doesn't have any money coming in, which sounded pretty much to me like I don't have any work for you. Um, and since he's more than comfortable having a house and all of that other stuff, he's definitely in no rush to get the barn closed up so it'll hold heat. I mean, I guess he talked to some people and asked about getting a furnace or something put up in here, and the guy won't do it until we wall off a section from the shop. And he says he's got the materials, but I don't see them. Um, so, you know, we're taking that as it comes. And as of now... Oh, I got Wi-Fi, it looks like. Um, as of now, it's a minute at a fucking time, really. Uh, I'm hoping Elvis in the medication, if I give him six capsules every couple, three hours to keep him sedated and medicated and comfortably sleeping, uh, I'm hoping that it helps the inflammation and the swelling that seems to be causing the leakage. And it's pretty, I'm not sure if you can see, but it's pretty gnarly. That whole area right there from finger to finger is a knot and that's all seepage. I know, but just keep your nose away from it. It's gross. Uh, gnarly. Nothing like dealing with stuff like this. Uh, so, yeah. I guess we're dealing with the hard truths and realities. So, I guess I get to deal with the nasty, see if I can clean it up a bit, and uh, take it from there. This is Clem Hawkins, residentially challenged, uh, and Mr. Elvis P. Muttley, most beautiful, bestest bubbies ever. He seems so happy with a hurt butt. Yes, you're my bubbies. I love you. We'll talk to you later. Bye.